Welcome to another episode of RDC or Red Door Conversation. I'm Marla Lewis, and as you guys have heard, my three co-hosts are here. Tana Young, Kim Dixon Dudley, and Lisa Brown White. We have an amazing show for you today. We're going to be talking about the first thing that you are doing when the world opens up again. So let's get this party started. Hey, Lisa, hey, hey. what are you thinking? Well, it's time now for what? Red Hot Topics, guys. Hey. And, and I Red Hot Topic for today is, do you think that we as a, as a city, city of Houston that is, <laughs> are we opening up too soon? I want to know, do you guys feel that we're, if, that we're opening the city up a little too soon? I, well, I you know, so. <laughs> we, we have a guess who's, where, who's I'm on deck see. and ready to chime in. Can y'all hear me okay? We can. Okay, yeah. awesome. So, yeah, most definitely, I feel that we'll open up a little bit too soon. I think we're all excited about getting back to our normal lives. I think we're all excited about getting back to business. Um, but I, when it comes to expensive costs of our health and our lives, I think that can be a problem. Got it. Um, can y'all hear me okay? Can y'all still see me? Some things are going on. Yeah. Here okay. So, you know, bottom line is, I think we probably should wait for another month or so to kind of let this virus get under control and stabilize itself, not increasing. But at this point right now in time, I think it's too soon. Uh, and I think what's going to end up happening is it's going to spike up our numbers tremendously, which is going to allow us to go into another lockdown, another phase, into a second wave that's not going to be good. We have some clinical trial studies that are in place right now, but it's not in place enough to start um, providing to the people. We won't have that clinical trial ready until sometime next year. So I think as we get close to, to that stage and we were able to give it to the normal people, it's been tested and proven. I think we're jeopardizing the situation of um, jeopardizing lives going back to work. And guys, that that is Chad Cozy, and he works for Big Boy Toys in Edo, and he works for Soul Food Vegan. So that is someone who actually is working in the industry and can give you uh the feedback personally because that's what he does every day we also have on the show uh giselle moss and she's with Hello. smart style hair salon uh miss mm -hmm. moss do you think that we uh the city of houston is opening up too soon yes i do <laughs> especially okay. considering that some of the things that they're opening first are the things where you are not allowed to social distance I mean, you can social distance in an office space, you know, at an oil company or something. You can set the, the cubicles apart and partition them. You cannot social distance at a nail shop, at a hair salon, at a uh, massage parlor or a tattoo parlor. You are right up on somebody. So me personally, I feel like it's, it's way too soon and I refuse, I'm not going to be a, it's like, well, let's, let's go ahead and open it up and, and see. Well, they can see with somebody else. It won't be me. <laughs> so. okay. okay. Well, I did a I did a poll um, on Instagram, and I did a poll on Facebook, and the Instagram uh, family, um, and the poll was, "Are we opening the city of Houston too soon?" Eighty percent, eighty-eight percent said yes. Twelve percent said no. That w no, we're not. I did the same poll on my Facebook store, uh, Facebook story. And we had about 92% um, say yes, we're opening too soon and 8% to say no. Can, wow. can, I, can, I, can, can I say something real quick? I don't want to jump in. Uh, you know, when we're talking about different ethnic races and color and significance, you know, we agree that we probably open up too soon. But a lot of Republicans and different parties, they think differently. They think they have not been affected by the virus as much as we have been affected by the virus. That is something like the flu would be okay. 
don't stop my money. That's their mentality. Don't stop my money. I'm going to Abbott. I'm going to my politicians. Don't stop my money. And that is that is what we've gotten the feedback while we open up too soon. I went by 5015 the other day, Sunday, riding my bicycle. And I love Steve Rogers. He does great things. We got a lot, great thing going on over there. But it was packed wall to wall. I saw but two people had a mask on that whole entire establishment. There was wow. no social distancing. There was nope. nothing going on in place. So how do you go out to have a time, especially to this Memorial weekend that we have ahead of us, that people are going to be thinking, I'm going to practice social distancing while I'm drinking and having a good time. Impossible. People are going to want to yeah. hug, grab a drink, grab the bottles that you've been touching. The contamination is only going to spread the virus even more. Now, um, and then, Chad, and then by drinking, your defenses go down a little bit. Your inhibitions, <laughs> you know, right. alcohol adds a whole other element. Chad, where is uh, 5015 located, if you don't mind it's stating that? Avenue. It's off Avenue. I mean, it, it, it's right. out by right behind our freedom. I'm turning that cut, too. You know, they're both with mm -hmm. pack establishments, which is great. I just didn't see anything in place as of now or any of the bar, and I'm not just singling out them. I mean, you got a lot of bars. Spaces are opened up this weekend. The Davenport is opened up this weekend. Any any bars that we as Black folks like to go to, what mm -hmm. elements are in place to keep people safe? There's none. Zero. Okay. So I'm going to share something real quick. And Chad, you're, 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 the Big Boy Toys is located in East Downtown. You told me you have like people already trying to get in and, and rent those toys. Correct. Everybody's eager to get out, but I think a lot of what's missing is one, in my opinion, leadership from a whole bunch of levels. Like, what do we do in the midst of this this emergence of people now reengaging again? And yeah. then two, people don't really know it. It hasn't hit home for a lot of people. So until right. it hits home, it won't be real or important. And 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 I understand people's the other side of that conversation, which I think some people on the call today want to share the other perspectives, right? But, but I want to share some data with, with our viewers just so they can understand why it's important if you are even thinking about getting out. It, it's, not a, uh, it's not the flu. It's life or death. It really, really is. I pulled some data from Channel 2 and they, they sourced this information from the Texas Tribune. Uh, since we started opening on May 1st, we've had an uptick of deaths and cases. So it's not like we're on the downtrend right now while we're at, we're actively re-engaging. We're actually on the uptick. In fact, um, one of the, the pieces of data that I pulled is 1,440 people in Texas have now died from corona. And that's 224 people more than the last week. So like wrap your mind around that. 224 people in the span of a week now that we've wow. started no. re-engaging have passed away. They haven't gotten sick. They're not hospitalized. They've died. So at this point, we really have to take it upon ourselves to make to put protective measures in place because we don't have guidance from leadership. There aren't any controlled um, directives about what type of mass work or or what. In my opinion, I'm going to tell my family, my friends, uh, err on the side of caution. Err on the side of caution. It, it's and not, so that number you gave it. And and the other thing is the economy. I'm. I, we all have to get back to work, right. but. The economy only works unless there are living people contributing to it. So as we let people die, understand that that's a part of losing people who are contributing to the economy. So, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a full circle idea. We have to look at it like that. I'm ex excited to get out, but you know, just not not neck to neck and going to a bar. It's not worth my life. It's right. not. Tana, well, Tana, Tana also did a um she did a poll, a poll on her page i want her to give and they actually did comments and feedback so tana what are the viewers saying are they ready to reopen what was the consensus on that and so you have some people that are saying yes we need to reopen we should have reopened a while ago then you have some people that are saying no we need to continue to stay on lockdown we need to continue to stay in our homes um you know just you know i have one from robin she said it's too soon they don't know where the stuff is, where the stuff came from, and now we just opened. What are they going to do when people start getting sick again? Um, Kenny said, "No, you can't stay closed forever, but it doesn't mean your personal behavior needs to change. My behavior won't change anytime soon. Mask up and no crowds, no eating out, etc." 
Um, so I, I think it just kind of depends on where we're going, you know, because some places will, some establishments will have more crowds than other people, um, you know, other places. Um, and at the end of the day, you just need to be responsible and do the right thing. Of course, wear your mask, wash your hands, stay your butt at home if you don't feel good. Um, I just can't, for me personally, I'm just going to be honest, I, I can't live my life in fear. I can't stay in the house. Well, I can, but I, I don't, I choose not to. Um, but I am going to be responsible when I'm outside, when I'm outdoors. Okay, Marla, well, my, you had something to say. Yeah, my thing is this. There's a difference between needs and wants. And I think that's what we are forgetting here. Uh, when you, I, I, I feel a certain way when I hear a person say, I need to get back to work. I need to earn income. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to someone saying, I need to go to a the store. Bar. Or a bar, yeah. Do, do you really need that or do you want that? And, and that's the thing that I am, uh, concerned about is that as humans we're so used to catering to want uh, instead of need and so with that being said I'd like for people to be um, cautious I'd like for people to be respectful of others and to to help others because you know we could all say well I don't have the virus well, here's the, here's the thing. You may be a healthy person and you may contract the virus and you may be okay with, you know, you may come out okay with that. But what about someone who comes out on the other side of that is all I'm saying. So opening up, there's a thin line there for me because I do understand. I, I, I make no qualms about someone who needs to earn money to take care of their family. But, you know, just to hanging out, I, 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 I'm just not with it. Right. Well, so Chad, you guys are opening, but what kind of measurements? And Giselle, you, you might want to speak this too as well. Yeah. I mean, uh, from, uh, from a business owner's perspective, what kind of measurements are you, are you trying to implement to, to keep a safe space as we reopen? It's, it's so hard uh, in the sense of way because I put things in place. For example, at my school shop, um, I told my staff, nobody comes in the building. Okay, um, put a tent outside, everything, I moved everything online, reservations, uh, reservations online, booking, contracts are done online. If they didn't do a contract online, we have a tablet outside that you can sign up and fill out. Uh, I maintain my, my, my team to wear gloves, wear masks. We actually sell masks, custom masks for people's faces. We sell eyeglasses, protect the eyeglasses. And we also sanitize all the bikes uh, before they go back out again. So we sterilize the handles, um, the seats, uh, with core wax white and things like that. Um, so that's that's the only thing we got to measure. Uh, do people follow that? And also we limit it only five bikes per hour. So we don't want large groups or large gatherings of 10 parties or 20 parties coming together. Five bikes per person per hour. Uh, Memorial weekend, I had some boys that had to open up to 10, um, but it's not something I want to do but it's something that's kind of being done. So I, at the end of the day, we can only do as much as we can. Uh, even at the restaurant, uh, I tell my staff, wear masks, it's mandatory. Uh, some of them do, some of them don't. They're delivering food. Our dining area is closed. I will not reopen my dining area until this virus gets in control. Our dining area is not that big anyway, so I'm not gonna lose that much money. Uh, we're more of a carryout kind of restaurant anyway, so then the fact is even where it goes. But I'm, I'm, I'm refusing to open up the dining room area until uh, we can see some major difference in the uh, shifting of the virus. Uh, also, I talked to a scientist on a different note. She's working with the virus, uh, studying the cure for it. Uh, she's in stage two. That's why she's staying right across the street from me, uh, Kim. And uh, she said, I asked her, what can you tell me? And she says, I can't tell you much. I can't talk a lot about it. But Appreciate the earth that you have while you have it. And learn how to love people and respect people and care for people. That's the best thing I can tell you because this situation is not going anywhere. And quite frankly, she used the words of um, kind of the end of the world kind of type of thing. It's kind of weird. Um, and I was like, 
okay, is this girl crazy? Or is, she, is, she, is it something that we just don't know? Uh, how big is this situation going to take effect? I know we've been down this road 50 years ago or 100 years ago, but we've never seen this in our lifetime. So we don't know how bad this thing can get and how worse off this economy can turn into. Okay, so that guy's just to bring you up to speed if you're just tuning in, that was uh, Mr. Chad Cossey with uh, Big Boy Toys, which is located in Edo, and Soul Food Vegan, which is located in the Museum District in Houston as well. We have Giselle Moss, who is a, a, a she's a beautician, she's a, uh, she works for Smart Style Salon. Um, she's been in the industry, guys, for about 30 years now, and uh, she moved here to Houston from Oklahoma. She's been doing hair since 1990, and she's been doing my hair since I was 18 years old. I am now 45 years old, will be 46 years old. Um, I love this lady. She is my family. Uh, her niche um, is color and precision cuts, and I would have to agree with that. When you see me with my blonde, my highlights, my lowlights, this is the lady <laughs> behind all of that, guys. Let's welcome again to the show, Ms. Giselle Moss. And okay, we wanna you. hear some, some regulations that the state is putting in place, and if they are not, what are you doing? Okay, so really the, <laughs> the state hasn't, like uh, Kim said, the leadership is, is lacking, but for me, um, I, there's a questionnaire you'll have to fill out. Your temperature needs to be taken. You must have on a mask. I will be wearing masks, gloves, and safety goggles. Um, I don't think there's any way that it's five stylists in the salon that I work. I don't, all of us cannot be in there at the same time with clients and social distance. So for me, that's a concern because it's like, how are we going to really make our money if you can only do one person at a time, because, you know, we multitask. We may have four or five clients at one time, but we can't have all those people in the salon at the same time anymore. So it's just something that's right now. Um, I haven't gone back to work. We're due to go back next week sometime. But I, personally, I haven't decided because I do have some underlying health issues. And I just feel like I'm not going to die for a haircut. So, um that's it. But as far as safety is concerned, with that, we'll find out. But I, it is, it's really no leadership. And then this 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 uh, uh, idea where you can wear a mask or not wear a mask will mess with me. <laughs> You're going to have to have <laughs> all a mask. <laughs> if you don't want to wear one, then you will not get your hair done. You know, if you cough, if you sneeze, I'm going to side out you one time. And then the next time I'm like, do you think you need to maybe... Reschedule. Go ahead, go home. <laughs> yeah. Please. <laughs> because I'm just not doing it. So, I don't know. We'll wow. see. We'll see what's going on. And then that's another thing. It's like this whole thing is let's, let's do it and, and then we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see means somebody's getting sick or somebody may die. That's it. So, that's it. You know. Now, Gisela, are you going to require, I'm sorry if I missed it, but do are you going to require that your customers also wear masks? Yes. Okay. And I, and yes, and so and that, when you make the appointment, I'm going to ask, do you have a mask? Do you have a mask? Okay. Then you need to, you need to get one. I have, I have several, but as you know, I don't want to just give them all away. But um, yeah, wow. you have to have on a mask. And I know some of, part of the service, you may have to take it off, but yeah, for the majority of the time, yes, you have to have your mask on. I mean, think about a shampoo bowl. You're they're breathing up in your face. You're breathing down in their face. Uh-huh. 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 I wonder if the nail salons are also required. Look, because, you know, my, my hands, <laughs> these fingers just look horrible. I, I would love to go get my, my hands and my feet done, a mani and a pedi, but I haven't gone yet. I haven't gone because I don't know if, you know, if it's some, something that I feel safe. I don't know if they have people in there, like, you know, Tons of people. I think it depends on, on when, where you go. Uh, a friend of mine went and got his feet done, and he said the nail, it was packed. You know, and I said, wow. and you went in anyway, huh? He was like, gee, my feet look like whatever. I said, okay. But, <laughs> I said, but you know, I hope your feet are okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I'll just, then I had another friend who went to the nail shop, and it was only, she said the lady had like three stations in between, only three, three techs could work. Okay. Day. And that's another thing in the salons with my coworkers. 
I feel like everybody should pick their days. Nobody, we don't think we need to be in there at the same time. Let me do Monday, Tuesday, mm -hmm. every other Wednesday, and be in there. And then you do this day, and, you know. I have the schedule. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, so what uh, so Giselle I want to know what is since the the state hasn't given you guys any regulations what is the smart smart style management saying you you have to do not much so we that's what I'm saying we have a meeting Wednesday and we'll see and we'll see what they have to say and I'll, I'm going to be voicing my concerns and uh, we'll see what they have to say if, personally if it's not enough for me then my my health issues are going to prevent me from going back anytime soon anyway but uh yeah we'll see what they have to say hey guys we'll see what they're gonna do. Mm -hmm. before we leave hot topics because this is definitely a hot topic I, I, i'm gonna circle back to something you said chad and this i have put a question mark on my paperwork and it just still i still have a huge question mark we're opening we have really no treatment um for this disease or virus and um the only way to manage it is that you know you have a healthy immune system that can fight it off so and then if scientists or people who are in science infectious science because I've, I've heard some similar things chad are are given these um you know these horrible you know outcomes that are that are probable it may be that there just isn't an answer and we are in a, a living experiment and so i i even social distancing is a, a an experiment because we don't know how much that actually helps so the goal is just to minimize and to um just just try to mute it as much as possible but i think this is going to be an ongoing concern for for quite a quite a while and and we probably need to wrap our minds around that and get ready how we how do we operate in this new normal you know exactly. and, and, it, and without leadership from other entities all of us maybe in our own respective businesses provide some leadership that spreads out into the community you know for things that we know better you know we can make when we're where we can make recommendations to be safe and sorry and you know? well, so i'm reading um oh, go ahead oh, i was going to just respond to him real quick i think there's three safety things you can do um, when the Chinese at first got the virus and it was spreading real rapidly, I remember uh, the leadership government had basically said, hey, listen, go back to your grandmother's recipes and use those to help treat yourself. And they noticed that made a huge impact on their people because your DNA and your, your, your body from where you come from, there's herbs that your great grandmother has been using to heal you for a long time. That's kind of what it's going back to. Uh, it's going back to making that high, high tai tea. It's going back into exercising. It's going back into using those herbs and superfoods and things that make good smoothies because that's going to maintain your immune system. As far as social distancing, and I know everybody want to get out, you know, do some old things that you never did before. Go camping, right? Camping is social distancing. <laughs> you don't have to be around a bunch of people. Go out in the woods, you know, go out, go hiking by yourself if you can. You know, get away, take a road trip. You don't have to go out and be around a bunch of public people. Um, you know, stay at home. I mean, you know, it's a lot of things you can do, exercise, you know, have cookouts. But all I can say is this, do things with caution, do things in mind. I keep, sometimes we start to forget and relax too fast. People start wearing uh, masks, people start wearing gloves. Mm -hmm. I think people got too comfortable. And I think we, that's the, the moment we get comfortable is the moment when we, when the virus has no love and has no fear for anybody and it will attack good us. Point. Good point, Chad. Good mm -hmm. point. Hey, mm -hmm. Tana, you just recently took a, a trip. Like you went. I did. I did. So I went to, um, I went to DC and um, I actually had a really good experience and not that I'm promoting this airline, but I did fly United Airlines. And uh, my experience was really great guys. When we, even before we got on the plane, the gate agent came over and, she let everyone know that it is mandatory to wear a mask. And if you do not have a mask, that you can go up to the counter and get one. Once we um, boarded the aircraft, they, you know, normally they walk around and give you snacks. Well, we, we got our snacks eventually, but we got the little Purell wipes. And so, of course, I wiped every freaking seat down <laughs> in my room. Seat belts, everything. 
But it, overall, it was a really pleasant experience. I felt safer being on the plane. And you guys know they sterilize the plane now. So it gets completely, when they deplane, they clean it really, really well. But once I got off the plane, that's when I started getting a little nervous because I was rushing that morning. I did not bring gloves. I did not bring, um, I had a mask, but I did not have any hand sanitizer. So I was trying to hold on to the, you know, little cavea. You go on the little speedy walk thing or whatever it's called. And so you're trying to hold it, touch it. I was touching that. Then I had to take the train to the other airport and I'm touching the pole, the, you know, so I won't, you know, yeah. fall over anything like that. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't bring hand sanitizer. But my, luckily for me, my daughter had some. Um, once we got to DC, I, I had a blast. There was, it was not too crowded. And Chad, I did go hiking. I went hiking with my daughter. I go hiking, I got mountain bikes. I ride a bunch of mountain bikes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have, um, my friends have boats and stuff. We go fishing. I mean, it's kind of just, I just, this is where I come away from. Because I know if I'm in the city, Personally, I'm going to want to socialize. I'm a social butterfly. I'm going to want to get out. My friends are going to come over. And I just can't take that chance. So instead of me being in the city on the weekend, I tend to come out, you know, a little bit to the backwoods and spend my weekends there. And I love it. It's peaceful. I love it out there near the water. Um, you know, and I just, it's the best place I can be to help. Because I know I have to go on, I have to work. So during the week, I have to come to the city and do what I have to do to pay bills. But at the end of the day, is this my escape route? keep from being around a lot of social people. So Tara, DC is a tourist spot. I mean, people normally are at the White House or all these museums, all these touristy spaces. What was that like? So let me tell you guys, the first day that I got there, went, went to my daughter's apartment just for a little bit, freshen up. Then my, my daughter, she's she can't keep still. So she's like, mommy, let's go. We're going to go down. We're going to go next to the White House. We're doing this. And I'm thinking like, OK, I was thinking that maybe we're going to just like walk around 45 minutes. Mm -mm. We did 11 miles walking around. It came out to about 11 miles. And that day was actually hot. But there was people out when we got there. The truckers were protesting. So you had a lot of truckers there, um, you know, protesting and Camera crews were out. Um, protesting, uh, so the truckers are protesting because they want more pay. They said the brokers are taking the majority of their money, and so they, they want better pay. They want a better percentage. Mm -hmm. um, so it was quite interesting to see that. Um, we did the, the motor scooters. I've never been on one of those. And so we was next to the White House, and I tried to take a turn, and I freaking went into the bushes. You know, so it was something different. <laughs> I forgot to use the brake. I was like, oh my God, how do I stop? And I was trying to stop with my foot and I ended up crashing into the bushes. But after that, I did get the gist of it. So I was fine. Um, and then the next day we went hiking and that was, we, we had a blast. There was still a lot of people, but you could still, it was a lot of people, but you were still able to keep your distance. And if I felt like I was getting too close, I would just slow down. And so, just let them continue to walk more, you know. So, but so it was a really you, great experience. Let me ask you this, Tana. Um, while you were visiting the D.C. area, uh, what would you say was the percentage of people that were wearing masks? Right. Not many. I'm going to so, say. So, see, that, that's where my concern is. That, that is that is where my concern is. Because even being here in the city, going out, doing what I need to do, um, we're rehabbing a property of ours and we've been going to Lowe's and Home Depot and people, they don't have any on. I'm going to be honest. I feel like maybe only 20% of the people in the store have masks on. And that is alarming. That is concerning. That puts me in a, in a, para, uh, a paranoia state of mind because I'm, I can't. Were they, stay, were, they, were they trying to keep six feet away from you? Because I find that people still walking up on you. like you Yeah, know. no. That, that no social distancing <laughs> is being practiced at all, which is why I don't let my kids go in there with me it's like like I, I hate to say this me and kevin we went we had to go pick out some selections but i told them lock the door stay in the car don't come in because i'm not nice a lot of times and i will get at you if that social distancing thing is not exercise if you don't have a mask on and you're in my face you're gonna feel the heat and mm -hmm. i'm gonna let you yep. know 
I will say this when we were in, I think it was, we were in Constitution's Garden. So there wasn't a lot of people that have masks on, which was crazy. But when we went hiking, there was, I, I saw quite a bit of people hiking with masks. Okay. But walking around D.C., no, I, I didn't see a lot of people with masks on. Mm -mm. Well, guys, I want to thank – oh, go ahead. I was going to say something, Lisa. It's funny. I'm not – I'm the nice guy. You know, I mean, I remember going by P15 last Sunday, and I'm looking from this. Two people came up there and hugged me, like randomly hugged me. And I'm like, yo, I'm not ready for this yet. But I couldn't <laughs> be rude enough. I mean, because some people, they will get all the way in your face like this. Trying yes. to talk. I'm backing up. They will come right. close. Yes. Right. <laughs> you have to. You have to. Oh, tell you have to get your arm out. Out. <laughs> my my daughter's friend. My my daughter's friend. Um, her friend was there with her family. They came up from Atlanta, and so the dad. I wasn't expecting it. The dad hugged me, and I was like, <gasps> mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when he left, I was like, oh, my God, he hugged me. I was like, give me hand, san hand sanitizer. And I was doing this. And look, I was putting it all on my chest and my cheek. And <laughs> Exactly. Guys, yeah. I, I want to thank uh, Giselle Moss and, and Chad Kazi for joining the show. We really appreciate you. I'm sure um, this was some great information to give to our viewers. Um, mm -hmm. Just thank you so much, guys, for being a part of it. We're going to wrap this show up, guys. I want you to follow us on YouTube at Red Door Conversations, on Instagram at Red Door Conversations, and on Facebook at Red Door Conversations. Thank you guys so much for joining the show, and you all thank have you a great day. Me. Lisa, don't, don't, don't hang up just yet. I just want to say one more last thing. So we're in phase two. Let me just end with this. So they have child care centers, massage, personal care centers, youth clubs, rodeo events, bowling alleys, bingo halls, um, skating rinks, bars, aquariums, zoos, day youth camps, overnight camps, youth camps, I'm sorry, sports, and other professional sports that are opening wow. right now during phase two. Wow. Well, they can enjoy themselves and have a great time, but the whites are going to be here uh, situated in our home. All right. Everybody guys, stay well. Stay, stay okay, well. Guys. Stay. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.